let's look at hot reload in .NET 6. Now, for most of my training, I work to give you an in-depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you just need to get the quick answer to the question, how do I use this? That's why I created the 10 minute training series. Let's dive right into this code. Now I've already set up our code demo for us, and this is going to be a .NET 6 project for all of these things. I have Blazor server and I have a WPF application. I wanna show the hot reload works pretty much everywhere, or it should, there may be some bugs still being worked out as we get close to launch. So what hot reload is, is the ability to have the application update as you are running it. Let's do this. Let's run our Blazor server app and just see this in practice. So once it loads, we're gonna see our Blazor server app. I'm gonna shrink this down to a portion of the page, not the whole page, that way we can have our code over here as well. So now that we have this, let's go to our index page where we're on right now. And we can say, you know what, we can change this to YouTube and hit save. And now this is gonna to update to say, hello, YouTube. Note that the reason it did that on save is because of this icon right up here, this fire icon, this is hot reload. I have checked the box that says hot reload on file safe. Now you can also just click the icon to have it reload, but I prefer to have it whenever I save my app. Now this does also save state. So if I were to change this value to say 11 right now, I come over here to my counter page and I want to modify something. Let's just change this to just count instead of current count. And now it says count. Notice it still says 11 here. If I change the C sharp code, I can say plus equals three and hit save. And now when I hit the click me, it goes to 14 and so on. So hot reload is the ability to make these changes and have them be applied without having to stop your IDE, make the change, restart it and see it now in action. And it does save state as well. So this is a great new feature of .NET. This is not applied to just .NET 6. This is built into Visual Studio and it should apply to almost any project you have, .NET Framework projects included. So .NET Framework, .NET Core 3.1, .NET 5, .NET 6, doesn't really matter. These should apply equally. Now I've had a couple of glitches on a new WinForm project that I had, but for the most part, this seems to work great. Now let's show off, we've done the, the web app and that works for pretty much every web app the same way, but let's now come down here to my WPF application. I'll set this as a startup project. Let's just see it. As it stands right now, this is my really um, awful WPF application. Let's run it and get this app loaded up and it's gonna load the other screen. So I'll bring it over. Let's just shrink it down a little bit so you can see it off the screen. And it says FN and LN, which would stand for first name and last name. But, you know, I'm typing here and I see, hey, wait, you know, Timothy goes off the page. That doesn't seem right. We should probably have it be um, bigger, otherwise it looks like my name is Mothy Corey. And that's not great, um, especially not if you're in middle school. So let's come down here and hot reload does work here. Let's come down here and make some changes. There is a XAML live preview as well. I gotta unpin that because we can see it. So let's make a modification here. First of all, I'm gonna change where it says the width. I'm gonna change this to be min width because it might want to be able to grow beyond that. Notice it already changed that field. And if I say min, and I haven't saved yet. So because of XAML, it's saying, you know what? We don't need to save. I will just re-render automatically, but yet st save that state. And I can say, okay, let's change FN to first name. And let's change LN to last name. And you know what? I don't really like that. I think that we should have more spacing beyond just that. So let's change the, the min width to be 200. Well, that's probably a little too much. Let's do 150. There we go. I think 150 works. Notice it changed it for both of them. That's because the column 
it's going to be maximized to the column because it doesn't have an actual width. And since the column grew with one of them, it grows for both of them, but I'll change it in both of them to a min width of 150. So there we go. So now we have our changes in WPF as well. Again, without doing a lot of work, I can just launch it and start making modifications. This makes for a very quick dev loop. The idea that you see a problem, you fix it right away, you see that fix applied, you tweak it a little bit, you say, you know what? I want these margins to be bigger. Let's make this margin 15 and see what happens. Ooh, that's not right. Let's put it back. You know, you can very quickly make changes and go, yeah, no, that's, you know, this is what I want. No, it's not what I want and try it out. So this makes modifying of pretty much anything in the UI so much easier. Now it does apply a C-sharp code as well. It applies to HTML, CSS, and so on. But I would caution you, this is one of the questions I got on another video. Um, I would caution you about changing things like your, your data access code, your async code, or things that are really far down in your application. That's not really what this is for. This is for mainly modifying your user interface. Now, recently we did have a bit of a kerfuffle over part of hot reload being pulled away. I did a whole video on that, but I do want to point out that this does work with .NET watch and that's the command line version of .NET. So you can actually watch this and have it launch the application and have hot reload from the command line, which means it works in VS code and other places as well, not just visual studio. So that's a, really nice feature. So that's hot reload in a nutshell. That's how it works. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments. Which type of app are you most excited to use this for? I tell you what, I am really excited to use this in my next project. I'm planning on doing a Blazor application really soon for production. And this will be a big part of how I make those changes so quickly. So let me know what your thoughts are, what you're going to use it for. And if you want the source code for today's video, that's down in the description. Use that link. Thanks for watching. As always, I am Tim Corey.